My name is Saborn Elijah Perry, uh, and I'm pursuing my bachelor's in math and physics at NYU. Hello, folks. This is Ruth Elbari, master's in physics student at Brown University. All right, so today we're continuing our discussion on general relativity. What did we discuss last time? Okay, so last time we discussed time-like paths, space-like paths, uh, and the space-time interval, where here the space-time intervals, a square is less than zero, you're greater than zero, and if you take a light-like path, it's exactly equivalent to zero. So let's just flip this real quick for space-like uh -huh. paths. This is positive. Okay. Time-like, it's negative. Got it. Okay, very good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, wonderful. So, right. so today, yes. uh, I mm -hmm. think we're going to start off by talking about uh, the twin paradox, which is very commonly cited paradox where uh, one person stays on Earth and another person goes to the moon. Initially, they're the same age, which is why they're considered twins. But as the twin goes uh, up in a rocket traveling at relativistic speeds, then goes back down to Earth, suddenly he returned and he's way, way older. Oh, the guy on Earth is way older than the twin. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, let's see how this arises. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to raise this and draw the space-time diagram. Okay, so these are the points I'm going to label on the world line of the observer who stays on the Earth. This is the world line of yeah. the stay-at-home person. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is the world line of the person who's going away to another planet. Oh, sorry. The twin who goes away and then returns, still being young, while his um, his twin has become older. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's see if we can understand this effect using relativity. Okay, yeah. so what I'm going to do is first label these points A, B, C, A, B prime, C, and calculate the space-time interval for this trajectory and for the other twins trajectory yeah and compare their proper times okay yeah the thing That's is proper time is essentially just the time that someone uh seems to have measured in their own reference frame That's so right. it's like the time that the clock on your wrist is currently displaying right now so the proper time of this twin is clearly less than the proper time of the twin that's aged a lot more so we have to figure out why this twin's proper time is so small compared to this one. That's right. At the end, we should get that the twin who went away to B prime should have a smaller proper time than the twin who stayed on the Earth. That's why the one on Earth is older. But what is proper time? So How proper do we find time it? is defined as minus the space-time interval. So uh, more often, you'll see proper time squared is minus the space-time interval squared. Interesting. And the reason why is the space-time interval, okay, it can have greater than zero, equal to zero, or less Isn't than zero. Isn't that the space-time interval squared? Or you could also take the square root, but that will give you complex ideas. If it's greater than zero, then we have a space-like mm -hmm. space -like curve. Uh, if it's equal to zero, just like we discussed yesterday, it's light-like. And if it's less than zero, it is time-like. If it's space-like, the reason why it's space-like is because it travels more in space than in time. Than in time. Yep. If it's light-like, what does it mean? That means they're equivalent. So that means delta x squared is equal to c delta t squared, right? Yeah. Or in other words, uh, the velocity of whatever particle you're talking about is probably around c. Because delta x over delta t is equal to c. Yep. And time like means what? Uh, it's traveling more in time than in space. So the velocity is probably less than c. And what trajectory, space like, light like, or time like, would a particle with mass travel with? Well, obviously time like, right? Why? Because, I mean, time like is the only one where our velocity is less than c, which is pretty much the speed limit for every uh, massive okay. particle. Very good. And light like is what a uh, world light line of a photon would be. Yep. Right? So, okay, let's get into the calculations. So, first, let me label these points. I'm going to say that the distance between A and B prime in space, I'm going to call that L. delta x 
Okay. And I'll call the distance in time between A and C delta T. You guessed it. So now we're going to label these points. Let me come over here. Can I erase your light cone? Yeah. Okay, very nice light cone, but let me label these points A, B, C. Okay, so can you label point A for me? Okay, very good, right? Okay, good. Now let's calculate the space time interval. First, we're going to calculate the space time interval for the path A, B. In fact, I made a mistake. Not the space time interval, the proper time is yep. what we're going to calculate. So, but they're can essentially you calculate almost the same thing, the except the magnitude, time. right? Yeah. Let's calculate the proper time from A to B. Recall that the proper time is uh, minus mm -hmm. the space time interval. Which would squared. make it CT squared mm -hmm. minus X squared. And is it okay if I use normalized units? So C is 1. Hey, you said you wouldn't use them last time. Well, that's what Carol does. So that's what I'll do. Okay. So we now get delta T squared minus delta X squared. Okay. Now, what are the two points we're comparing? A and B. A and B. What is delta X squared? Uh, zero. Okay. So is this okay if I let this yep. be zero? And this one is what just is delta this? T squared over 4. Okay. So now, can you solve for the proper time? What is the proper time? Well, that means that the proper time is just going to be delta t over 2. Okay, very good. So the proper time between points A and B is delta t over 2. So I'm going to write it, uh, let me write it here. So the proper time between points A and B is delta t over 2. Okay, very good. Now let's calculate the proper time for the twin who has left the Earth to a different planet for a b prime. So I'm oh, going wait to a second. erase this calculation here. Is that okay? Yep. So the proper time. Wait a second. Wouldn't it be a little bit shorter because now we're traveling in distance as well? Mm -hmm. So what would it be at the Go end? Ahead. It would just be t. Wait, go step by step through the calculation. So t a b prime squared okay. is going to be minus delta s squared, or okay. c delta t squared minus delta x squared. Now we know what delta x is. It's just going to be from zero to now delta x. Now we're doing a and b prime, right? Yep. Okay. So we get minus delta x squared, nothing special. Then c delta t squared. So we're using normalized units. So we just get delta t squared over 4. Okay, very good. So can you solve for the proper time? Well, I mean, it's not as simple as an express in here, but I suppose it still works. Now let's say that this twin who left the Earth is moving at a velocity v. If he's moving at a velocity v, then can I say that the distance traveled by this twin, d, or in this case, delta x is more proper, is equal to his velocity times the time he was traveling. So through. this, is, we can't just arbitrarily define one. This is just delta x over delta t, right? right? Well, we can say that if he traveled delta x, which is what we initially said, is the spatial separation between the twin who stayed at home and the twin who went to the star. Then, if he's traveling at a speed v, and he travels for half the time, delta t over 2, then isn't distance just equal to rate times time? Yeah, but wouldn't that mean this is just this, by definition? Let's see, 2 delta x over delta t? Yeah. So, that's perfectly fine, but the reason why I wrote it in terms of delta x is so you can substitute that here. Hmm. So, can you try doing that? Okay, Go ahead, so if we substitute that, that into here, we just get, uh, well, 1 minus v squared mm -hmm. times delta t squared over 4, which means we can take this out and just get <coughs> delta t squared, no, delta t mm -hmm. over 2. Okay. And if we weren't using normalized units, you, you notice we were multiplying by the gamma factor, which is the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So in this case, since we're using normalized units, it just becomes 1 mm -hmm. minus v squared. Mm -hmm. It's still important. Mm -hmm. I believe this okay. is not actually the gamma factor, but called the beta factor in Sean Carroll's book. Okay, right? so one. what is our final proper time from A to B time? So it should be delta t over 2 times beta, or if you wish to expand it, delta t over 2 times the square root 
1 minus v squared over c squared. Okay, we're using normalized units, so let's just say 1 minus v squared. Okay, mm -hmm. so now let me write that here. So we calculated the proper time for a b prime to be delta t over 2 times this factor of 1 minus v squared, right? Yep. Okay, so now let me erase our calculations. Now we're almost done. We're almost done. So now... But wait, let me, th let mm -hmm. me think for a second. Okay. Wouldn't that mean uh, that this is significantly smaller since we're using normalized units? We're assuming v squared is definitely a lot less than 1 or at least mm -hmm. smaller than 1. It has to be. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't that make this smaller than this, which is the point? Exactly. And if you really want to tidy it up, then we know that the proper time for the whole interval is just double the proper time yep. for half of the so interval. So you get delta t versus delta t times the square root of 1 minus v squared. So you can see the which one is time which? Time. Which one is which? Uh, this one is for the twin uh, that travels. So okay, uh, label it with the points that we used. Earthling and okay. uh, spaceman. Okay, so this is the proper time for the twin who stayed at home. A, B, C. That's the trajectory they yep. followed. So and this, this one is, the is A, B, for prime, a B prime C. And which one is bigger? Well, obviously this one. That's right. So the proper time for the twin who stayed at home is greater than the proper time for the twin who went out into space. And so that means the twin who stayed at home is going to experience more time on his personal watch than the twin who went out to space. So he's going to grow older than the twin who went out to space. Right? Yeah, and you can also just find the factor of time violation from here That's by right. dividing their experiences of time by each other to get the gamma factor. Okay, very nice proof, right? That yeah. explains the twin paradox. That's one way of looking at the twin paradox. There's many other nice ways. Okay, yeah, so now course. let's move on to uh, the second part of the lecture. What's it talking about Lorentz transfer? That's right.